So now we're going to check um, for joint glides or mobility in both the patellofemoral joint and the tibiofemoral joint. So for patellofemoral glides, Marge, I'm just going to get you to totally relax. It can be difficult to get patients to relax all the way sometimes <laughs> with this, but I'm just going to check her medial glide here. You okay? Is that a bit sore? Okay, I won't. Uh, you want to be gliding the patella medially a little bit, and I might also check an inferior glide of the patella. You okay there? Again, I'd want to be comparing that side to side. And in somebody with patellofemoral osteoarthritis, you might notice um, some hypomobility or some um, decreased mobility with that glide. So the next glide I'm going to do now is moving to a posterior glide of the tibia on the femur. So for this one, I'm going to sort of hold underneath the femur a little bit to support. And then I've got one hand on the tibia here. And I'm just doing you OK there? Yep, yep. I'm just going to do a little bit of a glide there to feel how much joint play there is. You okay there, Marge? Yep. yep, good. And then you can also do the reverse. I'm actually gonna move this out now. Um, I'm gonna do a posterior glide of the femur on the tibia. So for this one, I'm gonna hold underneath here. You can relax there. And now I'm gonna do a posterior glide. Oh, you okay there? Yeah, yeah. Is that a bit sore? It's sore? Okay, I'll just move up a little bit. Yeah. And that's for extension. So because the shapes of the joint, we have the tibia is concave and the femur is convex. We're going to be doing that posterior glide of the tibia is assessing or is for knee flexion, whereas the anterior glide of the tibia or the relative posterior glide of the femur is for knee extension. But we'll get more into that um, during the treatment session, March. 